Whiskey is defined as a spirit made from malted grain, but we know it's so much more than that. Whiskey is passion. It's our history and it's our community. Join us as we explore what it means to be a part of the whiskey culture. Blairsville, Georgia. Cute, quiet, picturesque. And within this small southern town lies a distillery with a big history. Granddaddy Mims. They're chocked full of southern charm and have a moonshine recipe that's over a century old. Each run on their hand-built stills is a drinkable part of history. Let's take a dive in and see what makes this distillery so special. I'm Greg, your host, and thank you for joining us for another episode of The Rick House as we explore Granddaddy Mims. We're here with Master Distiller Dillard at Granddaddy Mims. Thank you for having us. So they are making moonshine here the old fashioned way. It is a very manual process. All of these stills are handmade, hand hammered. Uh, it is just uh, a very, very cool way to come in and see somebody still doing it with all that manual effort, all of that, uh, that old school character. So it's really cool to see you all doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> awesome. So you are talking here about a way to kind of tell when, when the whiskey and, and the moonshine is is more prepared and the proof and all of that, right? When it first starts running, the proof's real high. And the longer it runs, the proof goes down. You have to watch it with the bottle. And that, that's called a flash. That's our, I mean, above 120 proof. And as it goes down, you just, you just catch it again. Just every few minutes, but after you run it a while, you'll know when to check it more. But uh, you check it periodically, and as it goes, it, the, the bubbles get smaller and smaller. Yeah, I see that kind of suspended in they, they just keep going down until it, when they, when you do that, and they ain't no bubble. Then you quit catching your liquor because that's low proof liquor. We call it backing. Uh, some people call it the head and the heart and the tail whatever whatever you want to call it but we, we just call it back and high proof and back and, and uh, you don't want to put no backings in it because backing gives it a nasty taste <laughs> and and so it's interesting um you know we've been to so many distilleries and i've never seen anyone use this method but everyone's always using all all of these fancy gadgets and you know they're, they're using all of these different things to tell the proof and testing it and this just seems like a very Simple way. It seems like what you would have had to do back in the day to well, tell the, the old proof. way. You didn't have this new modern technology. You know? Oh yeah. And I started off with a bottle. That's what I've always used is a bottle. I can usually get it within a proof or so. You know, if you like, if you wanted me to get it to 100 proof, I can get it within a proof or so, but just by looking at it. But you know, they make and what they've got them here. That the, the liquor that goes out has to be exactly what it says on the bottle. They got some modern day technology yeah. type proofers to show you exactly what it is. But this is just a real fun we do when we're making the whiskey right here. I know, I know right there when it's dead and when, the, when you cut it off. Each step of Granddaddy Mims production line is done old school. Hand dumped sacks of sugar or grains, churned with old wooden paddles run through old stills literally held together with two by fours and tape and tested by distillers who are literally the embodiment of good old fashioned, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, Southern men. And Granddaddy Mims wouldn't have it any other way. Each part is a piece of that charm. It's a process that you can't help but be awed by. And it adds to the mystique of that moonshine atmosphere. Let's dive a little further into the production process. So we are here at Granddaddy Mims, and one of the coolest things is the still system. So we have been to many, many different distilleries, and typically there's all these big, pretty, machine-made stills, and but everything here is done by hand, all the way down to these hand-hammered, hand-soldered, black tape stills with two by fours going between them. And it it really gives you a feel that everything has this intentionality, this 
this handmade stuff, but why these handmade stills? You guys have a huge operation here. Why keep all of these handmade stills? We make it as authentic as we possibly can. Actually, um, had distillers, they made liquor for years and years and years. And it's basically their design and it's what they did in the woods. So we brought the woods inside and legal. So this is exactly how it was done out in the woods. So there's an intentionality here. Everything that you're doing is focused on that, you know, that original recipe, that, that the original way that that recipe would have been made. And you're trying to keep it as authentic as possible to the origin of the recipe for the moonshine that you guys it, it is, we keep everything pretty much down to the, like if there's a leak, we get, make a paste, you slap it on there, and that's how we stop the leak. Unless it's too big, and then you just gotta cut them off and patch them up. But um, everything that is done is the old school way. I mean, the beads still check the old school way. Liquor's running out the old school way. Um, like, there's a ton of science that goes into it, but the old timers didn't know the science. All you have to do is heat that up and cool it down. That's all the old timers knew. They bring that steam up, that's alcohol, and they make it cool. Yeah, there, there we go. It's a liquid. So I, I, I love that. And it's keeping with the core identity of, of why you guys created the distillery, why the distillery is here. I mean, you, you all are making cuts and, and not taking the easy way to make this liquor. You're doing it the authentic way, the way that you guys feel that it needs to be done. Is that right? That's exactly right. Like talking about cuts, once we proof down, we literally bring in spring water from Tommy's dad, we call him Rose Farm. We took spring water in from there and that's what we use to proof the alcohol down. So there's no chemicals, there's no anything. It's a bare minimum. What would be done, again, what was done in the woods is what we're trying to do here. I mean, that's incredible. So this truly is old style moonshine. This isn't a marketing gimmick. This is, you can come in and see these stills, see the tape, see it coming off the stills and, and see how it's being made. And you can see this is, this is authentic moonshine, not moonshine that's being pumped out on a huge column still. And you know, it's not a marketing thing. No. This is, this is it. This is the authentic moonshine. This is as close as we can possibly make it. For example, the bottoms gave out in both these stills, and you literally, you go around and you have to work the copper about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. So it takes about three to four times around the bottom just to get your bend right to be able to put it back on. So, I mean, when you say hand done, they're literally completely handmade. Saying those stills have character would be an understatement. And learning how they used them to create their own special brand of moonshine was an absolute treat. After that though, we had to try the finished product. Luckily, Granddaddy Mims has a bar that's perfect for kicking back, unwinding, and having some great drinks in some absolutely amazing cocktails. So we figured we'd do just that. So we headed on over to the bar. Let's go check it out. So we're here with Megan, a good friend of mine and the creative and marketing mastermind behind Granddaddy Mims. Um, when we came to Blairsville, one of, I mean, the first thing that we recognized is this really is just a, a small town, Southern charm place. And, Very much so. And I mean, the town square, it's, there's just all of these mom and pop places around it mm -hmm. and little city hall and it's just, it is one of the coolest, most quaint places that we've been, but everybody seems to know Granddaddy Mims. Everybody seems to have stories about coming here and, yes. and trying your moonshine and, and enjoying it and enjoying it at home. So what is it like having this, this small town and knowing all of these regulars coming in and, and having everyone here know you and your product and, and really even pulling people in from surrounding areas to this tiny town? just for you all. Yeah, it's crazy. Blairsville is a cute, quaint little place, um, but we like to make it come alive with the energy that we're bringing. 
Um, so we try to do things in the community. Um, we try to hold concerts in so indoors, outdoors. Um, we're trying to do any kind of donation and charity events that we can. We sponsor all the things in the community um, between the school system and you know just local things that are happening. We're trying to be incredibly involved. Um, so we can take a concert and bring in 2,000 people. And so we want those 2,000 people from outside to see how amazing our little town is. And so we try really hard to capitalize on where we are because it is, has made us who we are. And you know, I think that's amazing that that, you know, Blairsville being such a, you know, such a, like you said, a quaint little southern town, for you all to have the, the notoriety, the recognition, and, and the scale of production that you all have, and, and the notoriety behind the spirit, and to bring that back into the community and pour back into the community here, I mean, you all have to be a driving force when it comes to like you said, sponsoring schools mm -hmm. and, and helping build out the area, you know, for Blairsville, you all have to be a driving force in that. And I mean, it's it's incredible because I'm sure you all have come to rely on the community, but I, I'm sure now the community has come to rely on you all. Yeah, it's really neat. We um, we're working really hard to make sure that we work with all of our local mom and pop shops because we are one too, even though we're a little bigger scale now. Um, but it's cool to go from just you know a hundred followers on Facebook to ten thousand. Um, and it's because we've we've tried to dig our nails and our feet into the ground here and to work with each other to, to capitalize off of each other and what we all can do um, and how we can help each other out to grow together. Um, that's what Blairsville is all about and that's what Granddaddy Mims is all about too. So I, I love that and why, I mean why pour back into the community? Once you've got the followers, you've got all of that, there are a lot of places that'll kind of retract from that. They're like, all right, we've got the notoriety. We're not just known here anymore. We're known all around, why are you all pouring so heavily still into Blairsville? I mean, it's our heritage. We're all from here. Um, our family grew up here. My mom and dad are high school sweethearts um, from the, the uh, high school up the road, and it's just who we are. I mean, if we didn't have Blairsville, we wouldn't be us, and so we're gonna just knit, drive that home as much as we can. I mean, I think that's incredible, and it speaks to the heritage, and uh, you know, you said your, your history is here, mm -hmm. and so you're pouring back into the same place that has just built that multi-generational heritage because it's not it's not just you your dad your grandfather I mean it's it really is the whole family that that's yeah. come from Blairsville and now you all are in a space to to pour back into it and to, to help continue that legacy and that heritage going forward is that right yeah absolutely we love it so much I mean I really I couldn't see us anywhere else I mean people say you know you should move your location to somewhere bigger with more tourists and it's like but we wouldn't be us and I just think that being here not only helps our town and our people, but it helps us as a brand and who we are. And I don't think we'd be us without so it's really become an identity thing as well. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We could sit and drink with them at that bar all day long, but we've got work to do and things to learn about this distillery. So we packed up our cameras and moved right along. The bottling line helps them keep up with production and it's specially suited to their brand of mason jar moonshine. And then those jars are packaged up and shipped out to eagerly awaiting fans of their delicious and historic moonshine, much like you saw at the bar. And after that, we headed up to Tommy Townsend's office to learn a bit more about the heritage of the distillery, how they got where they are, and the direction that they're headed. Well, it, it actually started long before him uh, with uh, my great-grandfather, I think, and uh, his name was Ott Pewitt. And uh, so it just kind of it kind of trickled down. I know my, uh, my grandfather, Mimi, Jack McClure, he, uh, he actually did sawmilling and stuff like that. But his, uh, after he got into it, after Prohibition, um, you know, his, his main income was, uh, was bootlegger. And uh, he was one of the most famous bootleggers around in, in this part of North Georgia. And uh, a, a funny story that I heard of a friend of mine's grandmother was a census taker. Uh, and they were, back then they used to go from door to door, you know, taking the census or whatever. And so they said that she knocked on the door one day and my, my grandmother and grandfather came to the door and greeted her. And she said, Jack, I'm here to take the census and said, uh, said I need to, I need an occupation to put down for you. And he goes, uh, well, kind of stuttered around a minute. And he goes, 
Just put works in corn. <laughs> he started making uh, moonshine in, in 1933. Uh, him and my uncle Abel um, and um, a, a guy named by the name of Theodore King, which uh, I've heard actually Theodore taught Popcorn Sutton how to make liquor. And uh, yeah, they, they would just make it, you know, back in the hills of Towns County. Um, I know one, one place that uh, they made it was a place called uh, the County Farm, uh, which is off of Gumlog Road in Towns County. But he actually, he made it, he ran it, he had other people in uh, the neighboring county, Rabin County, making it for him. And uh, so he, he had a pretty big enterprising business back then. You know, like, like I said, my grandfather was a big staple in, in Towns County, and he did he did good with the money that he made. Um, you know, he just didn't pocket it. He, you know, he helped people. He helped, uh, you know, if people didn't have money for Christmas or something, he would help buy toys for the kids, or if they didn't have Christmas dinner, he would help buy food. And, you know, and I, we just carry on that same tradition today as he did, you know, we like, uh, you know, like, we like to, to do stuff for people and, and uh, you know, we like to be a big part of the community and, and let people know that we're not just in the business to make liquor. It's, it's, it goes way beyond that. When, when we first came out, uh, started the business, um, I, I had no idea about it. And uh, like I was telling you before, a friend of mine uh, in California uh, we had the idea in Texas uh, about, uh, about bringing all this to the forefront, and uh, and then my wife and I kind of started started with it, and um, it just uh, it just evolved. You know, he he did make it in copper stills. Uh, our stills that we have today are kind of made on the same design as his was. Uh, you know, he he used uh, you know just corn sugar water and yeast and we're doing the same thing today as he was. Um, only thing we're just making it in a in a controlled environment and paying taxes. People people have asked me before, they said, well man, when you when you get really, you know, get really big, it'd be you should have some big liquor company to buy you out. And that would be cool and all, but I think when that if that ever came, that may change the recipe. It might, you know, bastardize it in some way so in some ways I just I want to pass this down to my kids my grandkids my great grandkids and just keep the legacy going after learning a bit more about the distillery we walked down into a historic barn one that holds a beautiful wagon that was once hitched to a horse and used to transport moonshine and luckily we got to talk to Tommy and his father about the early years the years when Granddaddy Mim was slinging moonshine during Prohibition and trying to avoid run-ins with the law. I'm sitting on Granddaddy Mim's wagon. This wagon was built back in the 1940s. And it's all still reasonable except the bed right here that I did that myself. The best story I've ever heard, they called his mules. He had two mules that pulled a sled to pull the sugar through the woods to steal. So the uh, law was hid up there somewhere and they caught the mules. And the guy that was driving the mules, he got away. The next day, my dad-in-law went to high and bought the mules back. <laughs> went to the jail. They took the mules to the jail. So he went to the, to the jail the next day and brought his mules home. Call some more sugar on <laughs> I guess. He was known as one of the best bootlegger whiskey makers in the county. And a lot of people bought whiskey, and he would tell you if it was good. So sometimes, you know, back then they didn't proof it. They just tasted of it. So if it tasted real good and make you drunk, well, that was a good liquor, but if it Made you sick. He'd tell people that it's, it's not that, not the good whiskey today. You know, sometimes it didn't turn out just right. You know, there's a lot of stories about my grandfather, but uh, one of the coolest ones, and we have these uh, an item uh, in our gift shop for sale. But this is a, a Zippo lighter, and uh, what he, my 
My grandfather's habit, he used to take it and sit on his front porch and rock and, and flip the Zippo back and forth. And uh, so uh, the youngest, uh, I'm the next to the youngest grandchild, the oldest grandchild, Terry Roberts, used to actually help my grandfather uh, uh, do some liquor sometimes. So they'd be sitting out on the front porch in the summertime and and uh, so maybe the law would pull up or someone and and uh, so they'd come in to search the house and and uh, Mimi would say, uh, to Terry said, boy, you know what to do while he's flipping the lighter. And uh, that meant to, to go over there across the road in the woods, get the liquor, put it in the car, and they'd search the house and everything would be cool. But yes, yeah, the, we have the Granddaddy Mims logo and on the back uh, it says, uh, boy, you know what to do. So this is one of the uh, coolest items I think that we have in the, in the gift shop that, that actually has a story to it. Well, I learned my manners and I learned respect at the end of a willow switch. I learned how to work, you know, I learned how to sweat with a shovel and a ditch. Learned about love in the backseat of a Chevy with a girl named Mary Ann. Learn how to roar till the break of dawn, playing in a honky tonk band. Don't you wonder who I am? Well, I'm the pride of Dixieland, and I talk slow so y'all understand. I'm a southern man. I'm your southern man. I learned how to sip that moonshine whiskey in the hills of Tennessee. I learned how to deal from a Mississippi gambler on a boat down in New Orleans. Learned how to fight for my rights in Alabama. How to run from a jealous man Cause I'm your lifetime friend And your good time buddy When you shake my hand Don't you wonder who I am Well I'm the pride of Dixieland And I talk slow so y'all understand I'm a southern man I'm a Southern man. Granddaddy Mims is everything you could want out of a true Southern heritage moonshine distillery. It's full of wonderful and passionate people, rich history, and is dripping with Southern charm. It's a place that you can't help but want to spend time in. And to the locals, it's an indispensable part of their community. Granddaddy Mims puts on festivals, concerts, and actively contributes to their local community through sponsorships and philanthropic efforts. They've truly become a cornerstone of Blairsville, a place where people can enjoy a great drink amongst friends and get high quality craft cocktails. Thank you for joining us down at the Rick House. I'm Greg, your host, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, my friends. Yeah. <laughs>